the worst character class in Dungeons and Dragons. That's what we're going to explore in this vlog. And I say explore because that, that title, that statement's, that's a little bit clickbait because we all have our various character classes, our favorite character classes, but in Dungeons and Dragons, it's a duality of how you, how you as a player approach the game and how creative you're going to be with the dungeon master. Certainly, if we're reducing D&D down to numbers where I just need to roll D20s and chew through stat blocks of monsters, then characters that can control that and regularly maximize are going to excel in that format. A perfect example, and I love playing fighters, but a min-max maximized fighter that is just designed to roll the highest D20 with consistent advantage all the time and put out multiple damage dice with enough bonuses that before you even roll any dice, before you even roll damage with bonuses and effects, you're coming in at plus 25 or plus 30. Before we even roll the dice, that's just min-maxing. You could play D&D that way. Sometimes you have to play D&D that way. But at other times, if it's... So I, I could say that that's the best character class, fighter. But if we're playing D&D where there's interaction or you have to have the ability to engage different groups and there's more of a role-playing aspect, then looking at it under that lens, I'd say, well, a fighter's the absolute worst. If you've got your min-maxed fighter and this is a game of diplomacy and skill checks, then you're going to kind of fall flat. So I feel like from that perspective, if I'm balancing out the min-max, if I'm balancing out the role play, if we're putting it all and exploring it, Hear me out. Hear me out. I think the Bard is the worst character class. I think also because the Bard... The Bard's an interesting character concept in D&D and how it's approached. Putting AD&D aside, because um, the Bard is one of the most challenging and unique character classes in AD&D. It is the hardest character class to qualify for what you think of as a bard in AD&D just um, does not exist in the current incarnation of D&D. So we're really looking at um, D&D 3.5 and higher in terms of a bard. The bard character class, I feel like right off the bat, a lot of players, they don't really understand the bard. Maybe you haven't played the bard enough. There's multiple dimensions of the bard. There, there's, there's, I mean, there's a learning curve for all character classes, but certainly with the bard, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to learn. On paper, it looks simple. Okay, I've got some magic. I've got a little bit of combat. I've got some rogue abilities. I've got some good charisma. I've got some interesting feats and skills. And I've got this thing called bard song. And depending on where I go and what I do with it, it does different things. Like what, what's, what's hard to, to realize that? Bard is like the original ultimate multi-class, right? With the Bard pulls in bits and pieces from other character classes and, and puts the Bard spin on it, certainly. It's not just a hack and slash cut and paste, but it pulls in things from other character classes that opens up multiple levels of synergy. So from that perspective, new players, when you start playing a Bard, it's like that invisible learning curve. It's, it's there. And within that adjustment, other players who maybe have not played a bard or have not played with a player that, that can routinely play a bard, they're going to look and be like, the bard's not pulling the weight. Yeah, we're getting a couple of buffs. Yeah, they're casting some spells. But not like the fighter over there who just, he's got like advantage on advantage on advantage. I don't know how, but somewhere in the rules, he's rolling 3d20 and taking the highest. I have no idea what's going on. Or it's not like, well, look, the sorcerer over there has got spells, but they're the point person and they've got jacked up charisma and persuasion and abilities. So when we get into that soft matrix of narrative and RPG, they've got that covered. Like the bard, like you're kind of not really doing anything, but a little bit of everything. That's synergy. So on paper, the bard looks like, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's kind of fun to play. But where's the synergy? But when you get into it and it, you explore a bard and you learn how to play the bard, you know, you, you learn how to come at angles, whether it's um, min-max role play or RPG role play, that 
the defenses are the weakest, the numbers are the greatest, you're adding a little bit of pressure or power in that moment where it's needed in an encounter. From that perspective, the Bard is extremely, extremely powerful. Uh, Yes, we're turning this into a little bit of a Bard vlog, and certainly we've explored other aspects of this character class. I've pushed that up to the archive here on the channel. But in terms of the worst character class, I think we're going to approach this from two perspectives. The misunderstanding or understanding of players. What do you think is the worst character class from that perspective? And uh, the second is actually the game design itself, where D&D says, hey, here's this character class. We've, We've got this idea, right? Here's how we implement it on the tabletop. And you're like, uh, you know, great idea. I love the class. And I understand you don't want to redo another class. I'm not going to clone a fighter because we already have a fighter. But how this is implemented, it's really not that good. They kind of um, missed the mark from that perspective. What character classes do you think fall under that category?